Before we get started with our meeting tonight, I'd ask uh, Madam City Clerk Sue Richards to read the quotation for the week. Thank you. Our lives are not determined by what happens to us, but by how we react to what happens. Not by what life brings to us, by the, but by the attitude we bring to life. A positive attitude causes a chain reaction of positive thoughts, events, and outcomes. It is a catalyst, a spark that creates extraordinary results. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. And before I start the meeting, I'd like to call the, call the alderman to the attention of the notice for a special meeting on Wednesday, and also uh, announce to the public that there will be a special meeting of the Common Council on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. in Council Chamber for the purpose of discussing an RO by the City Attorney submitting a communication being an opinion from the League of Municipalities regarding the Library Director's employment contract as requested by the Common Council. 6.30, Wednesday. Thank you. Call the 22nd regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Bauman. Here. Deberg. Here. Eberg. Here. Serta. Here. Davis. Here. Groff. Here. Kittleson. Here. Nanny. Here. Meyer. Here. Montemayor. Here. Ratke. Here. Sagali. Here. Stefan. Here. Susha. Here. Van Akron. Excuse. Vanderweel. Here. 15 present. Quorum's present. Alderman Groff, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Groff. Next item will be the approval of minutes. Alderman Graff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we approve the minutes of the previous Common Council meeting and the same stand approved is entered on the record. Second. Motion is second. Under discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resignations? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, first one is uh, dated February 5th from Yolanda Graff advising that she uh, is resigning from the Housing Authority. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And the next is from Yumiko Furusato advising that uh, because she's moving to Michigan, she needs to resign from the mayor's uh, Special International Committee. I'd ask for a motion to accept and file. Motion second. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> and uh, a letter from Richard Meyer, the uh, bid manager, advising that uh, there are some letters of resignation from Tammy Kennard and Craig Mazza from the bid board. And the bid board is requesting that the uh, following appointments be uh, place to fill the balance of their terms, Marion Keither and Mike Vanderstein. We've got two resignations here, though, right? I'd ask for a motion to accept the resignation of Marion and Mike Vanderstein. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. And uh, do confirmations first? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, please continue. Uh, January 16th, the uh, <clears throat> mayor submitted the following appointment for your consideration. Daniel Castro to be considered for appointment to the Board of Review to fill the unexpired term of Edward Gennaro, whose term expires 4-30-07. I'd ask for a motion to confirm appointment. Second. There's a motion to second to confirm. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, what I was um, would like to question is, not actually question, is that I've had some con con constituents call me to find out how you place people on boards or committees 
and do you follow a certain criteria and do they have expertise in the field that you put them on such committees? And, at, and at, in the future, if we could know just a little bit about this person because they don't know anything about the person in, in all honesty, either do I as an older person. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Alvin Sigali. That's a good question. What I am doing is basically follow, following what every other mayor has done. The appointments uh, process was never questioned before. If it is now, then I'm going to be glad to, to share with you how I do that. Uh, how I do that is I keep a file in my office of people who have indicated an interest to serve in certain committees. Uh, there's some people that don't want to serve in this committee, but they would rather serve in that. As you know, appointments don't come up every day, uh, and that's just the way it is. But it's totally discretionary. And if I, I feel that I would like to appoint somebody because I, I know them or somebody recommends them very highly, then I, I weigh that in my decision. Thank you. Please continue. Uh, Mary Liz Town to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Sue Dennis, whose term expires 4-30-07. I ask for a motion to confirm appointment. Second. Motion to second, under discussion. All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Appointment confirmed. Charlene Dickey to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Yolanda Groff, whose term expires 4-30-2008. And once again, I'd ask for a motion to confirm appointment. So second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Two nay. Com appointment confirmed. David Gallianetti to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Susan Humley, whose term expires 4-30-2008. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Okay. Motion to second, under discussion. All those in favor state aye. aye. Any opposed? Appointment confirmed. Marion Keither to be considered for appointment to the business improvement district to fill, fill the unexpired term of Mary Kennard, whose term expires 9-15-06 and Mike Vandersteen to be considered for appointment to the Business Improvement District to fill the unexpired term of Craig Mazza, term expiring 9-1506, signed by the mayor. Thank you. And before I ask for a confirmant, Alderman Segali, this is a good example of how I am following the recommendation of Mr. Dick Meyer. I don't know these people, but he, he recommends them very highly. They've shown an interest and care about the, the, what goes on in the bid district. So when he made these recommendations to me, I, I considered them and I accepted them. So these are recommendations that are being made by Mr. Digmeyer. I'd ask for a motion to confirm. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Confirmant appoint. Uh, confirm. And this is coming in for the first uh, reading tonight. Everybody submit the following appointment for your consideration. Dr. Curtis Hancock to be considered for appointment to the Commission on Aging to fill the unexpired term of Jerry Hempsing, whose term expires 4-30-09, signed by the mayor. Thank you. And that lies over. <clears throat> and I'll read this. Uh, honorable members of the council, as chairperson of the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Catherine Delahunt to be appointed as the Municipal Court Judge for the term commencing February 20, 2006 and expiring on April 30, 2007. Signed by the Mayor on behalf of the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee. Before I ask for a motion to confirm, I'd just like to make a, some quick comments. Um, Ms. Delahunt was one of the applicants that applied for the Municipal Judge. As you know, the Joint Municipal Court that we will be forming is between the, city, the Village of Kohler and the City of Sheboygan. It has been a long, drawn-out process, a lot of discussion. In the end, we will create a municipal court. At the beginning, I was a little uh, leery about it, a little reluctant to, to, to agree with the formation. I don't feel that way anymore. I'm ready to move forward. I think we're going to have a great municipal court. Uh, Ms. Della Hunt uh, is, is a candidate with very strong qualifications. When I met her, when the committee met her, she, she st stood up at the top. And I am so happy that she has agreed to be our judge, and I, I am looking forward to welcoming her to our team. I've asked for a motion to confirm appointment. So moved. There's a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion, uh, appointment is confirmed. This time I'd ask Ms. Delahan to please step forward and take the oath of office. <coughs>
Would you raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, Catherine Delahunt. I, Catherine Delahunt. Who have been appointed to the office. Who have been appointed to the office. Of municipal judge. Of municipal judge. Of the municipal court of the city of Sheboygan. Of the municipal court of the city of Sheboygan. And the village of Kohler. And the village of Kohler. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. But have not yet entered upon the duties thereof. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. That I will administer justice. That I will administer justice. Without respect to persons. Without respect to persons. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Discharge the duties of said office. Discharge the duties of said office. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the City Council and the Village Board of Kohler for creating the Municipal Court. I really think this is going to be a win-win for the communities and for the people who live in those communities. Uh, I'd also like to thank the Commission for giving me the opportunity to serve both the City of Sheboygan and the Village of Kohler. I'm very excited about this position. Uh, and I'd like to thank my husband, Kevin, and my five children who were supportive of my pursuit of this position. And then I thought I'd tell you just a little bit about myself um, so that you <laughs> can uh, know something about me. I grew up in the Milwaukee area, went to Madison for undergrad, and received a business bachelor's of business administration degree there. And then I went down to Chicago to John Marshall Law School. And uh, in the pursuit of uh, a legal career. I started uh, as a law clerk for a judge um, in the Chicago area, and I really enjoyed that job. Um, it is, uh, it's a great job to have, gives you a lot of exposure to the court system, and uh, uh, that is actually what sparked my interest long ago in a position that I'm going to be, you know, pursue or taking on now. So. Uh, from there, I joined the state's attorney's office of Cook County uh, uh, under uh, Richard Daly at the time. And I defended Cook County officials and the county government when it was sued. Uh, I left there, moved to the Milwaukee area, and joined a law firm, a private firm, doing insurance defense. Um, uh, and then uh, left that job to raise my children. and have recently started my own practice uh, in the Mequon and Kohler areas, and, uh, and now we'll be taking on this as well, and uh, it is very exciting, and thank you very much for your support. Thank you again, Judge Delahunt, and welcome to our team. Next uh, item on the agenda is public forum. Madam City Clerk. Okay. okay. And uh, be before we announce the, the, uh, the people who are going to speak uh, on the, during the public forum, we'd ask, as you notice, we've had a change in uh, the configuration of our council chambers. The public forum will now be up in the front where they can face the public, the aldermen, and, and look at us here, address the council. Uh, the, the mic needs to be adjusted close, as close as you can to your, to, when you speak, to your mouth, so that uh, we can hear you uh, well. Thank you. Go ahead. First on the list is Lee Montemayor.
Lee, could you give me your home address, please? My home address is 1050 Logan. And you will have five minutes. You're welcome. Mayor and this council for allowing me the time to comment on my tonight. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Mayor Perez, uh, James Brett, Mayor Perez, as a title from the head, also the head of the firefighter. He seems to be putting out a fire of the week. Tonight, this council has a very good opportunity to prove to our community that we do what we say. Regarding the purchase of lethal electrical stun weapons called tasers, without the cameras, this council voted to be part of this weapon system. The purchase of these weapons without the cameras because they're in short supply is not a valid excuse for not waiting until these cameras are available. During the public protection and safety meeting of February 14, 2005, I asked various questions, including the implementation of rules and regulations in the use of these awful weapons. Chief Deputy Weiss was extremely helpful in answering my concerns. Here are my questions and the answers supplied by Chief Deputy Weiss. Have you developed a plan for training with these weapons? The answer, we are working on it, which means our de police department is not ready to implement the process even just for training purposes. Are you going to ask our police officers to sign a waiver for them during the training with these weapons? Answer, we will follow the recommendations of the manufacturer. Are the officers going to be required to get tasered in order to carry these weapons? Answer, we will follow the recommendations of the manufacturer. If the manufacturer taser requires that any individual volunteering to get tased <coughs> sign a waiver that will hold him responsible, will not hold him responsible for the injuries or death resulting from the training process, is the city going to require the same waiver? If not, to sue also. Answer, we will follow the recommendations of the manufacturer. This is the waiver form from the Taser Company. And it goes like this. This is a required waiver from Taser Company. Liability, release, and caveat not to sue and hold harmless form which states that the, at the very top heading when any person that volunteers to experience a Taser device electrical discharge, quote, Taser exposure, must sign and read this form prior to any taser exposure. This is the city's form. As you can tell, it's blank. That means that if our police department does not require the same waiver, the city of Sheboygan and its taxpayers of this city will be responsible for the injuries, damages, or the death caused by these weapons. This also means that the manufacturer of this weapon does not have very much faith in their product, and that that has been proven by the hundreds of lawsuits that have been filed against them because they're very dangerous, lethal <coughs> weapons. The same waiver should be required by the city as the manufacturer. The very first doctor I asked about this electrical shock weapon <coughs> stood up, looked me right in the eye, and made the following comment. Anyone who would volunteer to be electrocuted by a stun gun is an idiot. He stopped my physical examination at that, time, at that moment and immediately went to his computer and proceeded to give me the information sources to research the effects of electricity on the human and animal hearts and various other organs. This council voted to supply cameras for each weapon so a record of every event is recorded as these weapons are deployed. Here are the 15 aldermen who voted aye for these cameras. Eberg, Manny, Van Akron, Bauman, Kettleson, Deberg, Graf, Davis, Sagali, Cerda, Vetki, Stefan, Meyer, Montemayor, and Vanderhuele. The descendant vote of nay was made by Alderman Susha. I now ask each one of you who voted for these cameras to be part of the Taser weapon system to show me and the rest of our citizens that you mean what you say by turning down the request to purchase these weapons without the cameras because they're not available at the present time. Our police department has done excellent work without these shock weapons for many years. In a few weeks, will not cause a hardship or a dangerous situation until we have all the 
T's crossed and the I's dotted to ensure a safe and well-regulated process in place before these weapons are used in training and the deployment and use against <coughs> innocent citizens unless the officer's life is threatened. And only then should they be used. Thank you. Right on the button, thank you. Pardon me? Right on the button, thank All you. Right. <laughs> that was good. Uh, next on the list is Mike Williams. <coughs> Mike, could you give me your home address, please? 722 Goldfinch Lane, Howard's Grove. Goldfinch? Yes. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council. I would like to address comments and accusations made by Elder Person Renee Susha. She has alluded to strange consequences between closing North 21st Street and a donation received to purchase tasers. The closing of North 21st Street was a community policing project initiated by me in order to reduce the number of accidents in this area. It was done out of the concern and for the safety of the citizens of Sheboygan. At no time was I ordered by the chief or his designee to do this project. I made contact with representatives of MI Bank and Muth Company. I have never had contact with Mr. Muth. In a Sheboygan Press article printed February 16th, Alderperson Susha accused officers who presented the traffic study to the council of lying. She is quoted as saying, I want to know how an officer can get up and lie to an entire legislative body about something and then expect us to take corrective action on their lie. I want to know how an older person can accuse an officer of lying and not show proof and then expect that officer or the entire police department not to get defensive. The fact remains there were 26 accidents in a two and a half year period. There have been two accidents since the closing in nine months. I spoke with all her persons who should today. She told me that she did not say the word lie, but had said misled and had spoken with Eric LaRose to print it correctly. Eric LaRose informed me that the quote in the paper is an exact quote from Alder Person Susha. She did contact him the following day and requested him to change the wording to mislead. Webster's Dictionary defines lie as making an untrue statement with intent to deceive. It defines mislead as leading in a wrong direction, often by deliberate deceit. Either way you look at it, Alder Person Susha has made accusations without any proof. Alder Person Susha says that this is just a disagreement over North 21st Street. She talks about wanting to work together and asking the tough questions, yet she did not come to me to question my findings or study. She did her own personal analysis of North 21st Street and did not present it to Sergeant Tuzinski or me, nor did she confer with us on her own findings. Is this working together? Is calling me a liar a tough question? The Sheboygan Police Department exists to serve the community. Central to our mission are the values that guide our work and decisions and help us contribute to the quality of life in Sheboygan. We hold our values constantly before us to teach us and remind us and our community of our ideals. Our values are the foundation upon which our policies, our goals, and our operations are built. We need the support of citizens, elected officials, and city officials in order to provide the quality of service our values commit us to providing to the citizens of Sheboygan. We, the men and women of the Sheboygan Police Department, value professionalism. We strive for personal and professional excellence. We value accountability. We are accountable to each other and to the citizens we serve who are the source of our authority. We value our team. We are capable, caring people who are doing important and satisfying work for the citizens of Sheboygan. We value community problem solving. We are most effective when we help identify and solve community problems together. And we value integrity. We believe integrity is the basis for community trust. What is the mission of an older person? And what are your values? I believe older person Susha's accusations are irresponsible and reckless. These baseless charges of wrongdoing question the integrity of the entire police department and me. The people of this community look up to older persons and weigh their words very heavily. The people of this community rely on integrity of its police officers. Our police department investigates issues of officer integrity and lying, and officers have lost their jobs and careers because of these matters. This is not an issue that is taken lightly. These remarks are defamatory towards me and shed a negative light on the police department and the city of Sheboygan. My integrity is one of my prized possessions, and you older person, Susha, have made a personal attack on it. Thank you. Thank you.
next on the list is Andrew Bauman. Mr. Bauman, could you come up to the front here, please? And can you give me your home address, Andrew? Uh, 2228 Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right. Uh, good evening. I'm here tonight to talk about the moving of the Dog Beach from its current location just south of Blue Harbor to High Avenue. Um, I personally see this as unfair to both beach users, citizens of Sheboygan, and dog owners that use the uh, current facilities. Uh, Right now, currently, I am a very avid water sports user. I'm down at the beach three, four times a week. I'm involved in a sport called kiteboarding. You might have seen it. It's got the large kite uh, cruising around out in the lake out there. Uh, I spend a lot of time down at the beach, and what I've been noticing is that the area around High Avenue and Kings Park is probably one of the busiest and most used areas of the Sheboygan waterfront in terms of beach frontage. The area just south of Blue Harbor isn't really used that much when you look at it through year-long use, minus the weekends when you do get a few of the uh, non-residents coming up here to enjoy Sheboygan's beaches and the accompanying Blue Harbor. Uh, the area that they're looking at moving the dog beach to is literally a third the size of the current dog beach. Uh, it is also, it's only 30 meters wide, and it tapers quite a bit as, the, uh, as it meets the bluff. The, the water level currently right now is ridiculously low, and it changes cylindrically. And if it ever rises again, which it probably will, the dog beach there will be wiped completely out. Um, the, my biggest concerns is the fact that we're now moving the dog beach right next to a park, where currently it is kind of a little bit south of Blue Harbor, and it's not really by any direct area where people are. We move it next to a park that does not allow dogs. And in the press article, the editorial suggests we put a fence up. <clears throat> I really don't see Sheboygan as a type of community that puts a fence in the middle of their beach dividing two groups of people. All right? Um, and plus, it's totally impractical. The idea of how long is the fence going to be? Does it go into the water? You know, does it go all the way up to the trees at Kings Park? Things like that. Um, the current situation is also that the South Beach is the cleanest beach of all the Sheboygan beaches. Due to increased water clarity, we've got a large amount of algae that have developed in Lake Michigan. That all gets caught and trapped at North Beach. South Beach has currents that flush all that out. And I, like I said, I use these beaches a lot, and people, as well-being as they might be, don't really clean up after their dogs totally. Uh, the location at High Avenue is great because it's got a parking area right by it, which allows, I see a lot of old, uh, more senior citizen type people and people with disabilities using that particular area of beach because they can drive down to it directly without having to do a lot of walking. And plus, people are going to lay in the, in the sand right there, and there's going to be quite a bit more dog feces in that high populated area of beach usage. I kind of personally feel as a person that grew up in Sheboygan, left for a couple years and has come back, that our beaches are our best asset. And what I kind of see is this Great Wolf Corporation of Blue Harbor pushing the citizens' public beaches. And Great Wolf has done a good job. They've, in terms of getting resources from the community, they've got the best view in the entire city. They've got great tax breaks lots of money and land from the city of Sheboygan, and that's all good, I guess. But the part I don't like is the idea of them taking over and saying to our public beaches, we don't think we should have dogs allowed there because it might upset some residents. Well, if you're worried about a, or excuse me, not residents, but uh, some guests, if you're worried about people getting bit or injured, I don't think the best approach would be to move the dog beach to probably one of the more popular areas of the city beaches. So I take a little offense to that because this, this whole development and these corporations are having issues with the dog beach there that we as citizens need to take one of our best and cleanest beaches and now have it have a bunch of dogs on it. It's not fair for me to come up here to complain without a solution. So I feel that we should look at using the beaches down by the power plant for a dog beach. I went down there and measured them the other day. They're almost the exact same width as the beach by High Avenue. 
and I go down to the power plant quite regularly and fish for brown trout down there, and there is very, very, very few people that use those beaches. Unfortunately, it's by a park, which do not allow dogs, but I would much rather have something worked out with Lakeside Park having dogs in it than Kings Park, which is by far one of our busiest parks in the city. So I'm just here to kind of oppose the idea of, and the, I feel the misguided choice of moving the dog beach. Thank you, Andrew. Next on the list is Henry Capitillo. Henry, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street. That's in the town of Sheboygan. Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I'm here to speak on behalf of being open and to have dissenting opinions amongst the council members and even some people that come here on the public forum. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of you are aware that I I came here and I spoke when um, we had Mayor Schramm here at his last council meeting. Um, I came and I spoke and I said, look, I had uh, some problems with some of the issues and some of the aldermen know that, that uh, are still here from that administration. And one thing I did say is that it didn't matter who was elected, I would come here and I would voice my opinion and my concern. Um, saying that, um, I'm here representing myself, uh, citizen and also the executive director of Home Inc. I'm not involved with the uh, Taxpayer Alliance. I resigned as their spokesperson. I'm also not a member of that organization anymore. Um, the reason that that happened is that there was a meeting that uh, turned into a closed meeting. I personally did not agree with that um, because of my strong issues on open government and access to the public. I, I removed myself from that. Um, I believe that it's good to have descending opinions, to have people that uh, have opinions that are different than what maybe you may have. And the reason I say that is because the more opinions that you have, and maybe even descending that, the more discussion that comes about. Um, I mean, if, if our government wanted to have everything run perfectly, I, I, I don't think they would have had the different branches of government that we have. We have the judicial branch, the, the congressional, we have the executive branch. Um, if, if you have a problem, you, you, you go to the courts, you have the, the uh, local courts, you, you go to the appellate court. If you, you don't believe the decision that was rendered in the lower court, you go to the appellate court. If you feel that it's in the appellate court, it's, it's not what your view is, you, you have the right to go to the state Supreme Court. If uh, you don't agree with that, you have the right to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. So if, if every was, everyone was to agree on everything, we wouldn't have this type of checks and balances in our, in our government. And again, what I say is that that is good. That is good to have descending opinions. Um, I know that there's been quite a bit of discussion lately because of uh, some of the things that, uh, for example, um, we had some, some aldermen that wanted a special meeting that was to be held on account of some of the questions regarding the library. Um, there was a release today that basically said that the League of Municipalities said that the, the contract was basically not, not legal. Um, but that issue could have been discussed at that meeting, I think. And dissenting opinions could have been voiced at that, at that meeting also. Um, I was disturbed to find out that uh, through all that process, I think we had seven aldermen that wanted that, um, that never went, went through. Um, you know, to try to squash descending opinions because you either don't agree with them or you don't like what they say is really not open government. And uh, another, another issue was, I know that uh, Alderman Dan Berg, I heard him on the radio of all places, and he was uh, uh, criticized because he was asking questions as being an alderman. I thought that that's what aldermen are supposed to do. 
They're supposed to ask questions. They're supposed to want to know what is in the best interest for their constituents. Um, you now have a situation where you have Alderman Shusha that has, has been under fire also for some of the, the things that she has said. Um, again, you may not agree with the messenger or the message, but that doesn't mean that we have to squash a dissenting opinion. I think that if you're, if you're gonna look at uh, keeping an open forum and to, to basically enforce openness and to have any kind of dialogue, that it doesn't matter whether it's Alderman Berg or the seven other alder persons that wanted the special meeting or Alderman Shusha that had some concerns regarding the, uh, the police department. And again, I, I, I can say I am probably one of the strongest supporters of the police department. I have come here on a number of occasions and through Henry, all the... Would you like to ask for an additional minute to finish up? Yeah. Pardon me? Is there a motion to extend for how long? Pardon? If they ask, they can just have an extra minute according to the last document we passed in council that said they have an additional minute. Okay. And, and I'm a strong supporter of the police department. For the last three years in our building, I can tell you out of every incident that we have had in our building, and, and I probably <laughs> wouldn't want to say how many, but I'll tell you what, the police officers have been excellent. We've never had one single problem. Never once did we ever have a situation where an officer was not did not uh, present themselves in a professional manner or uh, anything to that effect. So even though I support the police department and I would continue to support them, um, one of the strong beliefs that I have is that you do have to have dissenting opinions. The reason of that is if you, if you go through our, by our building, you'll see the American flag and you'll see a black flag, which is a POW flag, which I don't see a lot around in any of the state uh, buildings or even the city buildings. We have it there and I also have a pen here that's uh, from the Vietnam Memorial. The reason is that a lot of people have given their lives. In fact, today as I speak probably in Iraq, there's young men that are giving their lives today to have the rights that we have in this country. Excuse and me, one Henry. of those rights is to have a descending view and to be able to speak out and to have y your, your views heard. Now, Excuse me, Henry, the minute is up. Okay, thank you very I'm much. I'm sorry, thank you very much. And last on our list is Susan Lassard. Is Susan here? <clears throat> Susan, can you give me your home address, please? I sure can. It's 5016 Menning Road. Menning? Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Welcome. I'd like to thank you for allowing me to have my time to vent my frustration as well as question the council in regards to issue number 22-11 on today's agenda. An agenda that was made available to me by Susan Richards, for which I would like to personally thank her for making it available to myself as well as any interested party. A problem solved in less than one minute and put to work just as quickly. A refreshing change when dealing with the issues of this city. I have been writing letters, taking pictures, attending many meetings, listening to residents in the area of Whedon Creek and South Business Drive, an area that I know not only work in as a property manager for Mandalay Apartments, but as a tax-paying citizen in the community living on Menning Road. I have been trying earnestly to bring this problem to a resolve for over seven years. I have asked my alderman to help me, and Mrs. Sigali has. I have asked the mayor about it, and he stated he didn't know anything about it. I spoke with Mr. Radke and he said he would put it back on the committee agenda and didn't. I called Ms. Susha and she did not return my call until after I spoke out on the radio regarding this issue. Ms. Susha stated many things in her voice message to me at, after the radio program and I have the entire tape with me. But for time's sake, I will only highlight the items that I felt so encouraged by but then unfortunately found out that it was just a voice message with little merit. As a committee chairperson to the Protection and Safety Committee, an alderman on this council, I thought her com comments were truthful, but to my despair. I will quote, Ms. Susha said in her message to me, I've been trying to get that issue back on the table for quite some time, and what I did is I went ahead and put it on the agenda for next week. 
I cannot guarantee that I'm going to get any answers out of the folks that I'm dealing with from the police department or public works. The reality of this statement is, at the committee meeting which was held and I did attend, Ms. Susha stated to me that she had been on maternity leave when this whole issue was brought forth and really didn't know anything about the facts of this issue. Ms. Susha then went on to continue to say of this message, I have been told that this is not a high priority issue because they do not have, they do not have more than eight accidents at this intersection, they only have six. Reality. Studies have been done on this corner, or at least they told me that they've been done on this corner over a period of time that I have been fighting for a solution. How does anyone know how many accidents and the findings of these reports if the findings of these reports have not been told to anyone or presented to anyone in committee? Ms. Susha then went on to say she was frustrated that we were closing down streets that only have two accidents per year and we are not looking at the high speed intersections were accidents that are more severe and uh, there are more than six of them in a year. This highly disturbed her. She again stated she was fighting for me behind the scenes and it was on the agenda but didn't guarantee that we would get any answers because they were also waiting to hear from the county. But she felt by putting it out that maybe that would light a fire under somebody and they would actually go out and do their jobs and get some answers. Reality, nothing. Ms. Susha has not been fighting for me behind the scenes. She was on maternity leave. We have studies, but no findings. We have accidents, but no plans to stop them. We have county versus city. I have a police department that agrees with the people in the community, and I have side steppers. Our city police department and fire department respond to the accidents on this corner, and we should have an influence on this decision. <coughs> At the committee meeting, they decided to write a second letter. Letters are not working. I've been writing them for years. Taking out, talking out of both sides of your mouth is not acceptable. When you're running the city, you should know what's going on. As this may again fall upon deaf ears, as they have already told me that a grant was applied for, but yet it really wasn't applied for, I don't know who to believe within the city. I ask the people who agree with the following to please work with me too. Ask Ms. Susha to step down from the committee. We need someone who does what she says and has the facts and works well with the police department. She does not. It is the safety of this communi community that concerns me, not a bunch of who shot John. Publish her the report of the findings of the corner of Whedon Creek and South Business Drive. We have the study done, where is it? <clears throat> Help me hold people accountable for their statements. I love the police and fire department. They are the backbone of my profession. I am insulted by Ms. Susha's continued comments regarding these departments, and I'm further insulted by her statements to me and then the public statements you've made to everyone else. In closing, please be careful when entering the above-mentioned intersection. I'm concerned for everyone who passes through it when more blood, and I emphasize more blood is shed, on this corner, it'll be on the hands of those who may, are made aware and chose to do nothing. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Yep. I'd like to thank all the people who spoke to the council tonight. I appreciate that very much. I'm sure the aldermen do too. <clears throat> As a matter of clarification on the Whedon Creek County Road, OK Road, it has been a long, uh, ongoing problem uh, that other councils and other mayors have tried to address uh, the problem, and it needs to be understood as there's dual jurisdiction at that point. Uh, the county, it is my understanding that the county has jurisdiction. Uh, a comparison that I could make is that casino that was brought forth years ago where the council could approve it, but if the county said no, then the deal was shut off. So there's instances where the county and the city have jurisdiction. What I have done, unbeknownst to uh, Ms. Lassard, uh, and it's not that I said I didn't know, it's that I said that there's double jurisdiction here and we need to be careful how we work with the county. But I had requested about a week ago, almost two weeks ago, a report uh, from the police department that would itemize and inform me how many accidents we have had at that intersection. And I wanted to know how many involve uh, personal da property damage and how many involve personal injury. The police department keeps excellent records. And when I requested this record, uh, it was brought to me and the record shows 
that in the last four years, there have been 24, 24 accidents at that intersection, seven in the last year. This Lassard is absolutely correct. There's a, a growing need for concern. And again, unbeknownst to her, I have put a letter on your desk that was shipped out today. And I would just like to read that so that we, we're clear on, on the issue. The letter is addressed to Mr. William Gearing, Chairman, Mr. Adam Payne, Administrative Coordinator. Dear Mr. Uh, Chairman Gearing and Mr. Payne, during the past four years, there have been 24 accidents at the intersection of Wheaton Creek Road and County, County Road OK. Last year alone, there were seven accidents, and two of those accidents involved injury. All involved property damage to the vehicles. As more homes were built in the area and businesses have expanded uh, to the south of the city, the frequency of accidents have increased. Of the 24 accidents in the past four years, 25% have involved injury. This is an unacceptable number of accidents. Future accidents need to be prevented. I am under the understanding that the intersection is within the jurisdiction of the county. For that reason, I am strongly encouraging you to take a lead in making this area, this safer area for our quick citizens as quickly as possible. A traffic light is desperately needed. Please contact me at your earliest convenience. We need to put a strategy in place to protect our citizens. The issue is not being ignored. We're, I'm trying to coordinate it with the county. We've got dual jurisdictions involved. And I feel certain that the county will respond in a positive way, and we will get this corner, this intersection, corrected. And I would like to thank Ms. Lassard for her diligence in pursuit of this problem that we've had in our community that is in our community yet isn't in our community. But wherever it's at, we shouldn't have 24 accidents and people getting hurt in four years. That has to stop, and I agree with you. And I will do everything I possibly can. I will give Chairman Gary and Mr. Adam Payne two or three days to respond. I will follow up with a call. If I have to go to the county board supervisor's meeting, I will show up there and make an issue out of it myself. But it's got to be corrected. The number of accidents are unacceptable. And Ms. Lassard, you're absolutely correct. It's time to do something about it. Thank you. Moving on, consent agenda, Alderman Groff. Mr. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that for items 21 1, 22 1 through 2235, that we accept and file all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all the resolutions. Second. There's a motion and a second. I'd like to point out that there is a correction to be made on the third page, 2215. An RC by finance, that should be an R RC by public works. Also, uh, Alderman Bauman has asked to have referred back to Public Works Committee 2226, 2227, and 2228. Alderman Bauman, would you like to speak on that, sir? I thank you, Your Honor. Items number 2226 and 2227 are referring to the dog run. At the request of other persons and the public, this will be on the agenda Thursday of this week. Interested parties may come to the meeting to uh, correspond with us concerning the dog run. For one more time, it'll be coming. Be, excuse me, it'll be coming back out of committee then, back to council for final recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like a separate vote on 2211, please. 2211. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll take a separate vote on uh, 11, and that is uh, the recommended filing the document, the RC. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Please call them. Would she like to make a oh, motion? Make, are you making that motion uh, to have a yes, separate vote? I move uh, that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. Any discussion on that? Would you like yes. to explain why you're doing it? Yes. Please. What, I, what I'd like to do, thank you, Your Honor, is um, just explain a little bit about what goes on in the Public Protection and Safety Committee. What happens is that um, we have certain criteria that we adhere to relating to when stop signs go up, relating to uh, when stoplights go up, et cetera. 
and a lot of times it's connected to the number of accidents that happen at particular intersections. And um, as we were just talking about, this is relating to the uh, Weeding Creek and um, the uh, uh, OK intersection. And the criteria there, well, what happens there is that the streets are in the city, but the streets are governed by the county. They're owned by the county. So the county has to actually do the repair and maintenance. But then if there's an accident there, you have the city fire and the city ambulance and the city police that would respond to them. Due to the high speeds, this is a concern area because of the high impact um, and the more dangerous types of accidents that could occur. When this issue first came to the committee, I was on maternity leave. And I've learned about the relationship that the streets are owned by the county and that the accidents are handled by the city just most recently at this last Public Protection and Safety Committee meeting. However, I've been told that this was also mentioned back in uh, July or August when I missed a meeting. So everybody should have been aware of how things stood at that point in time. But what I wanted to just bring up is that we get, every single time we meet, we have questions and requests for stop signs. 95% of these requests are turned down because they do not meet the accident requirements. Six accidents per year is borderline in regards to even putting up a stop sign. But due to the speed that's going on out there, it's a serious concern for myself and the committee. And that is why we took the extra step and asked you to again contact the city or contact the county on behalf of the city. We are very concerned with what's going on out there and I want to thank you for putting this letter together. Um, I think that if we would have let it sit in the, um, in the committee, we were just holding this document. We've been holding it for six months and I think that's a little bit excessive and I'll say to anybody that I'd like to light a fire under anybody's feet to get something to happen. If it's sitting in a committee for six months, I think we need an explanation as to why it's sitting there. So that's why we put it, I put it on the agenda um, because nobody else, none of the department heads asked me to move it forward and I felt that sitting there for six months was just too long and it was time to make something happen. So again, I want to thank you for writing the letter at the recommendation of the committee being that that's the only authority that we really have over this situation. I feel that we handled it the best that we could. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Any other Alderman? Okay. Please call the roll. D. Berg. Aye. E. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Bauman. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Once again, taking all the consent agenda with the exception 22, 26, 27, 28 being referred back to Public Works. Any further discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Eberg, Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Raff, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Sigali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Aye. and Deberg. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communication and petitions 22, 20, 2236, 2237 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 2238, Alderman, President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. 2238, which is a, a communication from the Shibuya Professional Police Association, and um, also 2239, which is a communication from Darlene Nardi, um, and 2240, which is a communication from Dimple Adams, and 2241, which is a communication from Bart Adams, I would move that all those communications be accepted and filed. Second. There's a motion and a second to accept and file 20, 2238, 2239, 2240, and 2241. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. One nay. Motion carries. 2242 lies over. Yes, I'm sorry. Two nays. Okay, so majority ayes. Thank you. Alderman Sarda, did you vote nay? Three, three nays. So majority. Okay, thank you. Yes. Oh, 2243 through 2254 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three. 2255 by Alderman Bauman authorizing executing a one-year lease for the 
agricultural property in the William A. Hayson Industrial Park. Alderman Bauman. Yeah, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to also take 22-56 with it, please. Please do. That will also be a resolution authorized by myself uh, executing a one-year lease for the agricultural property in the town of Wilson, formerly owned by John Poth, Jr. I'd move that both resolutions be put upon your passage. Second. There's a motion and a second to put resolution 2255, 2256 upon your passage. Is there any discussion? Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I know that I was in a committee meeting where we were talking about the $50 per acre, and I can't recall, was that an increase over last year? Um, and if you could just uh, let everybody know how much of an increase that was and um, what the going rate is for acreage in that area. Thank you. Alderman Bowen. Thank you again, Your Honor. The uh, increase is only $5 per acre, but it is the actual uh, going rate right now. They were warned that these are one-year leases and they are and could be subject to another increase at any time. Thank you, Alderman Bauman. Any dis further discussion on 2255 and 56? <clears throat> there being none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Segali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Deberg and Eberg, aye. 15 ayes. Motion <laughs> carries, 2257 by Alderman Groff, authorizing entering into a salary agreement with the municipal court judge. President Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I will move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. We should have a suspension. Attorney McLean. <clears throat> Sorry. That's okay. I would ask for suspension. Thank you. Okay. Is there any objection to suspension? Seconded. Thank you. There have been on, please proceed. Then I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. And there's a second? Yes, second. Second. Under, on, did you wish to comment, Attorney McLean? No, I was Not just going to just make sure it's talk suspension. about the suspension of this. Any discussion by the alderman? There being none, please call the roll, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Segali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Aye. and Serta, Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2258 by Alderman Ratke, extending the expiration date of the Help and Water Feature Advisory Committee for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that we pull 2265 forward with that also, please. 22, 22. I'm sorry. 2265. 2265. Well, the, the, they require a separate action. Okay, no, just, just do this just one take first. one at a time, please. Okay, then on 2258, I ask that the uh, resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Is there a second? Second, under discussion? <coughs> under discussion, I'll just quickly mention, and as you can see by the uh, resolution, that the uh, the Help and Water Feature Advisory Committee was scheduled to phase out automatically upon the presentation of their findings to this council. That's coming up forward. That's what Alderman Rackley was referring to, 2265. That's the, uh, the final report and recommendations detailing the committee's efforts. When that report is submitted and accepted and placed on file, then the Help and Water Feature expires. Uh, Alderman Rackley wished, and, and the committee wished that the Water Feature continue because now they're moving forward to try to secure funding to keep the water feature running. That particular aspect of, of what this uh, extension is allowing was not part of the charge of the original committee. And this is why it's important to extend the help and water feature uh, committee forward another nine months. Uh, I'd like to thank Alderman Ratke as chairman and the members of the committee for doing an excellent job. I was very impressed with their report. It was very thorough, very professional. Uh, your committee and yourself did a great job. I thank you for that. Any further discussion on 2258? There being none, Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Segali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Aye. and Davis. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2259 and 2260 lies over. 2261 
2262 to be referred. Report of committee six, 2263, 2264 to be referred. Report of committee seven, 2265 by the Help and Water Feature Advisory Committee submitting their final report and recommendation detailing the committee's report and developing its recommendation. Alderman Ratke, accept and file. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted. And, uh, There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. And a second. Under discussion? <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I was going to speak before, but I had a frog in my throat. I still do. Um, I want to thank the committee members for helping us put together this wonderful report. We had a lot of support in the community, a lot of people that uh, moved forward and asked uh, to be part of uh, continuing the project and finishing off the landscape and things. And, uh, it's been a fun project to work on so far, and we're hoping to finish this project up in just the next couple of months. So, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I wanted to express thanks for this wonderful report. It covers everything. Any question we might have regarding their committee, we've got the answer here. Thank you. Welcome. Alderman Manny. <clears throat> You're on. You weren't, you didn't want to speak? No. I think it's mine. No? Alderman Stephan, do you wish to speak? Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess just for the public watching, if either Alderman Radke or I know Mr. Decker's in the audience or somebody else in the committee wanted to summarize their findings at this point, I think it is a wonderful book, but not everybody's going to get to see it, so maybe they could just give a brief synopsis of where they've been. Or their... I'm sorry, you asked for Alderman Radke? Whoever, I know there's... Okay, Alderman Radke. Alderman Radke's here. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, we met several times over a what, two or three month period and discussed several alternatives as far as should we run this feature, should we not run this feature. We looked at the basic infrastructure of the feature and discovered that the community still wanted this. We had two public input sessions. We held uh, uh, in the library on a Saturday and on a Thursday night. We took emails from people. We uh, also had uh, public input dropped at these input sessions as far as flyers were concerned. Uh, I know the radio station ran uh, something online. We ran something on the city's web page. And also the press ran an online poll on their website. And the overwhelming response was four to one. People want to see this, this running. And one thing I forgot to mention just a minute ago, I want to really thank Dave Beeble for all the work he put into getting this put together. He was really an asset to helping us out. And the chairman, <clears throat> or the vice chairman of the committee, Bernard Markovich, Josh Decker, Dustin Havens, Jay Morris, Brian Pletz, and William Wood, because without those people, this report wouldn't have come in. And all the people in the community that actually came back and said they want to see the feature back up and running. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Alderman Stefan, is that okay? Thank you. Alderman Kittleson. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to, to ask the question, is this booklet available uh, somewhere? in the community or for anyone to see if the public wanted to look at the recommendation? Is that available that anywhere? That is a great idea. It, it really isn't. I'll admit that. But if there's anyone that would like a copy of that, if they would call my office and we'll make a copy available to them. It's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman DeBerg. Thank you, Your Honor. I thought maybe if they could have several copies right at the library, that if people go to the library, that they would be available right there. That's another good idea, Alderman Berg. I think we can do it tomorrow. Thank you. Alderman Recky. Thank you, Mr. Or Your Honor. Um, I'll talk to Vice Chairman Markovich, who's also president of the library board. And I'll talk to Mr. Beeble. I'll see to it that we get copies of this available for public inspection at the library. I'll make a call tomorrow morning, get that all taken care of. Thank you. OK. <clears throat> uh, president Graf. I guess it's going to encourage everyone to hold on to this, uh, this report uh, regarding the, the water feature. And um, because I'm sure during the next couple of months we'll be getting a lot of questions as to where this information come, uh, came from and so forth. And we can use it when we're talking to our constituencies uh, to, ask, uh, to let them know exactly what went all into planning on um, either reopening or, or doing something with the water feature. Wonderful. Good idea, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? OK, there being none. All those in favor of the motion to accept and adopt, please state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Report of committees 8, 2266 by finance recommending <coughs> authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the development agreement for the Morningstar condominium project. Alderman Graf, uh, President Graf. 
Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC um, be accepted and filed, and that the um, accepted and adopted, excuse me, and that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to say that initially when this came in uh, four weeks ago to the Finance Committee, I voted against it. And initially, um, the reason was because when this group came in, they said that they were going to bring in a $20 million project to the tax base, and we needed to give them $2 million to do the environmental cleanup. And then when it came back to the committee uh, four weeks ago, uh, things had changed. Now they weren't so sure if they were going to build all three phases, and they might only build a $6 million project, but still they wanted the $2 million in the cleanup. Um, I was glad that this issue was referred back to finance uh, at the last council meeting because it was, it, it was able to give us uh, better clarification in regards to the $2 million um, that we're going to allow them to basically keep their property taxes. They're going to take out the loan and then they use their property taxes to pay off the $2 million. But now there is a caveat in there that, that they can only use, uh, of that $2 million, we will only give them up to 20% of the value of what they build. So if they only build $6 million, they don't get $2 million from the city. Um, so that, that made me feel a little bit better. So they'll only get a portion of that money. I'm still not too crazy about um, if they start the second or third phase within the first 10 years, then we will extend them another five years to pay back the $2 million. I'm not too crazy about creating this type of TIF district for 15 years, but I do feel better that um, we won't give them the full $2 million. If they don't pr produce a $20 million project, we're not going to give them the full $2 million. So I will vote in support of this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alma Just as final word on that, this uh, contract has had extensive, and I mean extensive, uh, oversight by our city attorney, uh, myself, Mr. Gephardt, uh, Mr. Enders, and Mr. Holton. We've all looked at it back and forth, and I'm comfortable that it, 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 it's a good agreement, and I'd ask for all of them to support it. <coughs> Any further discussion? <coughs> there being none, please call the roll, Madam Clerk. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Bauman, D. Berg, E. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. and Graf. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2267 by Public Protection and Safety recommended authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of 20 taser weapons. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I move that the RC be accepted and filed and that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Who second? I'm sorry, who seconded it? Aye. Thank you. Under discussion, uh, Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, considering one of the uh, public forum gentlemen tonight, I'm, could, you, could you, would we be able to ask Chief Kirk that of the tasers will be compatible with the cameras when they're available? I'm sure they will be. Yes, Chief Kirk, would you please step up, sir? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Common Council. I think you answer your own question, certainly they will be. And if there was also another question earlier today by uh, Alderman Radke as far as the camera the dollars, it's under a different cost center and the, the dollars for the cameras are still there also. Alderman, first one's blinking is Alderman Meyer. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Chief Kirk, I just want to make sure that the cameras will be in place by the time the tasers are going to be used. We are not going to use the tasers without any cameras at this point because I just don't want to open ourselves up to lawsuits. Well, the issue of the camera is very interesting in the sense that will they not be used until the cameras are put on? Uh, the cameras came out initially, well, I shouldn't say came out. The ideas of the camera came out by tasers several months ago. They had been trying to work on these cameras, they have some test cases out there. Uh, we have been informed that the cameras will not be available until perhaps mid to late summer or possibly early fall. Uh, I have been advised that we have, <coughs> excuse me, we have an order in for the cameras. 
the Taser Corporation or this, this company we're dealing with uh, does have that, that order in. Uh, once they're made available to the public or to the uh, police department, we will certainly uh, get those cameras at this point. I can't assure uh, this, this committee or this common council, the mayor at this time, that we will not use them without the cameras. Uh, certainly, once they're available, they will be attached to those uh, taser units. Um, so that's, that's where we are at this point. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Next. What? You're not? Buttons are not connected <laughs> They told me they were. <laughs> you never get to talk. <laughs> okay, then you're next. Uh, President Groff. Thank you. The Chief already answered my question because uh, I wanted to know how long, if, if any time frame had been established as to when the cameras could be purchased. Yes. Thank you. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think we've waited long enough for these tasers. We've gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And yes, I know the cameras are going to be made available when, um, when they're there, but I think the officers need to be trained in the use of these tasers now and not a year from now, because a year from now something else might come up and they'll decide, no, it's not going to happen. So we need to have this happen now. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just want to clarify this now. I don't have any problem with us training without the cameras, but is that a process that's going to take a few months? I mean, I guess I'd like to see the cameras before we actually use them in the street potentially. Obviously, you might say that, you know, first of the month they're going to be used in the street. You might not use them for a month, so you really don't know until. But I, would we expect that before they're actually done with the training and used on the street, the cameras would be here, or is that not the case necessarily? The, the only information that I'm receiving is that by mid to late summer, or at least late fall, these cameras will be available. Okay, they have not been sold to right. any police departments. Okay, so I guess what I'm saying is, if this is passed tonight, your intention is to go through and train the officers, and when they're done training, they'll go on the street with or without cameras? Absolutely correct. Okay. I would like to make an amendment to purchase these, and they shouldn't be used on the street until the point where we do have the cameras. I think, you know, I have no problem with the officers training, but I just think, you know, it makes sense to wait for the cameras to actually use them. Okay, the, the amendment is to purchase uh, taser weapons. But not to actually use out in the field. Not to actually the use them. There. Okay, until. Not, not the purchase of them, just not to use them. Is that what you're saying? Right, they can purchase them, they can train with them. They just shouldn't use them in the field and put them out in the field and the vehicles until the point where we have the cameras. And there was a, a second? Compromise. Second. Second. Under discussion. <clears throat> okay, now we have Alderman Manny. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <laughs> I know that the police department will be developing a very thorough guidelines for their usage. And I'm sure that that will be shared with public protection and safety so that we are all informed about that, uh, those guidelines. And in an appropriate time frame, I would like to see those before us all so that we can see uh, very clearly the delineations of their usage. That policy in place, that might help us better understand this picture of use with or without cameras. For instance, uh, I would rather have an officer use a taser when his life is endangered directly as opposed to his gun. The gun is more fatal than the taser. So it just shows very distinctly that in certain cases, a taser would be preferred usage to a gun even if there's no camera. So Thank you. policy guidelines, I think, will be helpful for us to look at. I would like to. Uh... I'll let Alderman Serta let you address your counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. My understanding from what you had said, Chief Kirk, is this is a new impl implementation, correct, with the Taser Corporation? That's absolutely correct. Okay, and I, I see some similarities. For instance, prior to having airbags, we have seatbelts, but we don't, we don't stop using our cars to wait until they put in airbags. And you will make sure that we would adhere to all the safety guidelines in using these tasers, and that by having cameras, that's just an additional asset to the tasers, but they still can be used. I would ask the alderman to consider approving the purchase and the use of the tasers. Let me explain why. Because when the initial recommendation came in to purchase the tasers, there were no cameras attached. 
and we were going to approve them, and we we're going to equip our police officers with that particular taser gun so that they can use in their defense. When the chief and I have been working together very closely as a team, he and I were concerned that the first thing that hap it probably will happen is when somebody gets popped with one of these things, first thing you're going to say, the police shouldn't have used it. They should not have used it. So there were two things that were going to kick in. One of them was a, a strong policy that Chief Kirk has already addressed to us more than once, very fact specific, very clear, very traceable, where a taser gun is used, they can go back and actually track back the behavior and so forth. And then the second way that we're going to protect our officers is to have a camera installed. That came later. We had already agreed to purchase them. We had already agreed to let them use them. I don't see why we should now hold them back and say you can't use them until we get cameras. Uh, uh, the people that, that uh, attack our officers, they don't care if they have cameras or not. They're not going to wait around for us to buy cameras. I mean, the, the unruly behavior, that conduct is out there and it exists right now. Uh, while the cameras are, are a good idea, and I fought hard for them because I was looking more to protect our police department so that nobody can come back and make false claims against them that they were wrongfully used, I think that the second phase would be just as good, and when the cameras come in, it will be even better. And that first phase is the policy that Chief Kirk will pull into place. <coughs> Once that policy in, is in place, the tasers should be able to be used in, in, in their line of duty, and I think they will be adequate to, to, for, for our protection until those uh, cameras come in. As Chief Kirk has stated, those cameras are not in. They've been ordered. Nobody has them. How long we have to wait, I don't know. We cannot wait and put our police officers in jeopardy, and we need to be careful that we don't do that. So I would urge the council to please approve it tonight and vote against this amendment so that we can move forward and approve the purchase of the tasers. Chief Kirk? If I could just explain a couple different, different issues here. The reason we looked at these, in 2004 we had 100 and I believe 29 resisting arrest cases. Of that, 30 some of my officers or, or citizens were injured. At that time, during 2004, I believe it was um, 29, <clears throat> excuse me, 29 times we used OC spray and three times we used a baton strike or a baton in, in a strike. Now if you look at the force intervention and if you, you look at where they, the state had indicated tasers could be used, tasers are not to be used or not to be relied upon only in life and death situations when an officer uses a weapon. They're used at the same level of OC spray and a baton. So I think we're, we're misguided at times as to where we believe these should be placed. They're, they're to be used at that time when someone threatens the use of force or resi is resisting arrest. This is where it's placed, okay? And that is the issue we're dealing with is the officers who are injured and or citizens who resist arrest who then become injured. So uh, I will guarantee you the, the policy will not allow at only times it, it to be used is when it's a life or a death situation. So um, with that, uh, we presented uh, to, this, to a common council, perhaps not this common council, but we presented to the common council uh, the tasers, the program. I think we're rehashing some of these things. Uh, the common council already gave permission. We can set up information uh, for the Common Council, if you wish to have a session once again, to have people from TASER or trained uh, trainers come in to explain some of these issues or consequences of what occurs in, in things of this nature. As uh, Henry Capitello said tonight, and I hate to cite Henry, but I will, um, <laughs> we at times should have our difference of opinion, and I would I, I oppose many of the issues that Mr. Montemeyer has said. I don't believe it's accurate and we would be able to present information to the contrary. But I think at this point, you're absolutely right, Mr. Mayor, in the sense that when the cameras became available, we made it known to you. But that was way before, or way after we approved the, the use of the tasers. So I would train my officers and use them without the cameras. I think to just put 
a camera on these tasers does not make my officers more accountable, does not make them less or more likely to use this, this tool. It is just one more piece of equipment that's attached to that tool to be used and to infer that it's going to show when the officers use them wrong or the officers won't use them because they're not using them at the right time. I think it's wrong. Um, my officer spoke earlier, uh, Officer Williams, of the, the mission, that mission statement that we live by, and certainly we are holding our officers accountable for their actions. And these, in this area of the taser use is certainly one area that's watched very, very closely by administrators. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess it's it addressed to Chief Clerk, otherwise yes. he can take yes. yes, okay. Um I guess the question I have in my mind is you know, there's a lot of controversy out there about it. We keep hearing it back from the community. When is the policy going to be here that we can have it on our desks and actually read it? That's my big question right now. I mean, tasers are on their way. Um, when the cameras become available, you're going to order them and we've got the money for it, so that's not the real question. I guess the real question still in my mind is what at what point do you use the tasers? And we've asked for the policy. We have not seen it yet. When it becomes available, will it be on this desk for me to read as soon as you have it completed? Sure, we have not yet completed that policy. And if you wish to have a copy, we can certainly get you a copy and the rest of the Common Council a copy. But if you want to come down and take a look at our policy book, we have about that thick of a policy book. Rest assured, we are a state accredited agency, which speaks very loudly of the professionalism and of our policies. These are reviewed by an accreditation standards board and these standards are not, in fact, each and every policy is reviewed by the city attorney's office and sent back uh, to our department. Uh, these policies withstand uh, review by the attorney or the uh, city attorney by an accreditation standards board and they will not be off anything that is recommended by the state and or uh, Taser International. Thank you, Chief. Alderman Eberg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess as a general point of information, uh, the last time this came up, I went to eBay and Googled uh, on the eBay site uh, stun guns. I think there was something like 900 vendors. They're illegal in Wisconsin, but they're not illegal to sell. The nearest vendor was 65 miles from Sheboygan. So I think uh, in terms of availability of devices like the, the general public with all precaution, uh, I think it's apparent when devices like this are listed on eBay, and I doubt that the people who sell devices like this on eBay are very concerned about uh, where they ship them, if it's in the state of Wisconsin or not. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to echo uh, what Chief Kirk has mentioned and the question about the policy, I, I did review the policy directive manual changes, uh, I want to say a week ago, and I sent them back, and if I recall, Unless I'm incorrect, Chief Kirk, there, there is a provision that every time a taser is used, there's a report that's filled out. Absolutely. Uh, so it, it's not taken lightly, and they do document each use and review each use to make sure it's, it's being used pursuant to the policy as well. So I couldn't quote, sit here and quote you, you know, uh, what the policy is exactly, but the, uh, as the Chief indicated, uh, my recollection <coughs> is it is. I want to say continuum of, of uh, force, but that's not the buzzword, but it, it is in there in the same category as OC spray, and uh, I think the policy is well laid out. Uh, I was uh, interested to find out if, if it was, my main concern was whether or not it was consistent with the state standards, and as I understand it is. Thank you. Omar Reckie, you have any more? Second time. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm not trying to question the, the making of this policy or the accreditation. I'm just am saying I'd like to see it here so I can better understand and answer the questions that I receive. And once I read it over, then I can maybe ask better questions of the chief or any police officer. That's, that's what I'm looking for to be uh, better informed on my, very, um, you know, on my own. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> and before we take the vote, just as vital, just a final reminder. The council had already approved the purchase of the taser guns. They had approved uh, moving forward with it. They were going to be used. Coming back with it, finding additional money to install cameras was just an added feature that would help protect our police department when they use it. That's all it was. We will take a vote now on the amendment. 
Uh, the amendment is, please The read. amendment would be, an I vote would be to wait to use tasers in, in the field until the cameras are here. That would be an I vote to do that. Manny. No. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. No. Radke. No. Sigali. No. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Bauman. No. Deberg. No. Eberg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Graf. And Kittleson. No. Three ayes and 12 noes. Motion fails. I will take a vote <clears throat> on the uh, resolution as presented. Please call the roll. Meyer. No. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. No. Van Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Kittleson Aye. and Manny. Aye. 13 ayes, 2 noes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 9, 2268 by Public Protection and Safety recommending amending the code so as to delete and add various positions from the Fire Department's table of organization. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. A motion and a second, under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. <clears throat> Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Sigali. Aye. Stefan. Aye. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Bauman. Aye. Deberg. Aye. Eberg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Ordinances introduced 10, 2269. <laughs> 2270 to be referred. Matters laid over 11. 202189 20, and RO, RO number 5350506 oh, by the city clerk submitting applications for private well permits for various locations. Ask for motion to accept the file. Alderman Bowen. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the our report of officer be accepted and filed. Second. Motion and a second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> 2161, resolution number 2480506 by Alderman Graf, Montemayor, and Davis, authorizing the city of Sheboygan, Office of the Mayor, to enter into a contract with the University of Wisconsin Madison that will provide Dr. Barry Orton as a consultant to assist the city of Sheboygan in its refranchise agreement with the Charter Cable Vision. Alderman President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Sigali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Could you please just kind of explain this a little bit more what the refranchising agreement is? Uh, does that mean that Charter, we have to now start a whole different process with them or? We, we have a contract that's scheduled to expire at the end of the year, and because it's scheduled, scheduled to expire, then we need, we need to renegotiate that. We don't have, uh, or at least it's been the feeling of the city that we don't have the expertise in that particular area to, to uh, negotiate a contract with, the, with cable vision. So what the city has done in the past, and, and we're doing now again, is to hire a consultant, and that's uh, the consultant that has been recommended. Do you go out to, I mean, do you just stick with, uh, with uh, Charter or do you go to a different um, franchise or because Charter's in town, that's who we deal with or do you put out bids or? No, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Sigali, the, the process is uh, any cable company operating in the city of Sheboygan uh, is required to have a franchise with the city and that's the franchise allows the cable company to use the public right away to put their cables. That's why uh, satellite dish companies don't need any approval from the city because they don't use the city right away. Uh, but uh, Charter has approached the city and has, has had a franchise in the past and is requesting to continue that franchise. It, as the mayor said, it's due to expire and that needs to be renegotiated. Uh, it's not an exclusive franchise. In other words, another Time Warner could come to the city and also request a franchise if they, if they wished. That creates 
problems for the two of them, so that hasn't happened in the past. Uh, but as I say, it's not an exclusive franchise, but the process uh, is somewhat complex and the, uh, the technology behind cable and the services that they can render and so forth changes so rapidly, it, it's really in the city's best interest to use an outside consultant that, uh, and this uh, Mr. Orton is nationally recognized in the field. Uh, uh, it's, it's helpful to have someone who uh, does this on a regular basis, negotiates with these cable companies, so he knows what uh, the franchisee whether it's uh, Time Warner or Charter or whatever in Fond du Lac has agreed to do. He knows you know, throughout the state what the cable companies have been asked to do and have been willing to do and what they haven't been willing to do. So uh, that sort of thing, we really don't have the knowledge of that, don't really know a lot of the questions to ask or things to ask for. Um, we did use, uh, whenever it was 10 years ago, uh, the same firm, it wasn't uh, Mr. Orton himself, it was an associate of his that the city hired as a consultant as well. And I think uh, the service we get is, is worth, the, uh, worth the money. Uh, what's really the bigger problem or issue down the road is the chance that the federal government will change the laws on uh, cable companies, uh, cable providers, and take away municipalities ability to uh, uh, issue franchises to these cable companies. As I said, uh, satellite companies don't have to do this. We get a franchise fee from Charter, 5% of their gross revenue. It's a big number. Uh, the federal government is looking at taking that away because they, they see all these cable companies having to negotiate with every municipality. In any event, that's a long-winded answer to your question, but uh, I think it's warranted that we hire a consultant. <laughs> thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, we had Alderman Stephan. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to add, uh, we've dealt with this in finance. Uh, even before uh, Mike Hutz retired, he kind of clued us in that this would be coming down the pipe and what the procedures were. I just wanted to mention three things that are kind of important, at least for Alderman Segali as well as the public. Um, it's not an exclusive fee, but it is very much weighted in the federal guidelines toward the current, because they've got infrastructure and lines and stuff. It's, you know, it's not like it's a 50-50 chance that somebody else comes in and underbids them. It, it's very heavily weighted towards the current holder of the contract. And by federal guideline, the two things that are non-negotiable are the cost and the choices of channels. So you won't have to get phone calls about, from people asking you, what it really is is negotiating infrastructure, you know, studio, stuff at UW Center or different areas like that. But those two things are, by federal contract are not negotiable. So the two that you think you'd want to be negotiable are not. Thank you. Um, President Groff. Thank you, Aaron. And one last comment to make on this. Uh, the cable provider does reimburse the city for the uh, consultant's cost up to a, a cost of $30,000. What we're asking for tonight is a, a cost not to exceed $15,000 for this service. Thank you. Uh, Your Honor, if I could address uh, that. Attorney McLean. Just for, uh, for clarity, the, the, the language in the franchise ordinance says that, yes, that they uh, reimburse us for consultant costs not to exceed $30,000. Uh, when the last franchise contract was entered into, uh, that was pr prior to some changes in the federal law. The, the cable companies now take the position that the, the, the language in the uh, statute that's operative is something to the effect that we're entitled to a maximum 5% franchise fee plus incidental costs in renegotiation. They don't necessarily agree, and there's case law to the effect that uh, from other states that uh, they have, courts have held that they're not bound by this sort of language, this is sort of national language, uh, that that may not be binding. So that's, that's one of those things that's going to be negotiable as well, I think. While this is the language in our current franchise agreement and we would push that, 
um, it's not necessarily cut and dry that we're going to get reimbursed all that. Okay. Thank you, Attorney McLean. We have a motion and a second with the resolution upon its passage. Please call the roll. Senator Clerk. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. And Montemayor? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries 2162, resolution number 2490506 oh, by Alderman Graf, Montemayor, and Davis authorized a transfer of appropriations in the 206 budget. President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to second. Under discussion. There being none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Sigali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman, Aye. Deberg, Aye. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. and Radke. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2192, resolution number 2500506 by Alderman Susha, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the 206 JAG Program Award mem Memorandum of understanding between the city of Sheboygan and the county of Sheboygan. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion is second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll, Madam Clerk. Stefan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Deberg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? And Sagali. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2194, resolution number 2510506 by Alderman Montemayor and Meyer amending the composition of the Building Use Committee. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion to second under discussion. President Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, at this time, I'd like to amend this document um, to. Um, in the now therefore it be resolved section that um, the composition of the building use committee is hereby amended to consist of instead of three alder persons, four alder persons, and three citizens at large as voting members, and then the rest is the same. Okay. And I would so move that. There's a mo motion to amend in the second. And again, to get it clear, there will be one alderman, there's already three there that comprise the Build a news committee. There will be one alderman, additional alderman added, and please three citizens. So there will be four people at it. Mm -hmm. And under just discussion. under discussion. Yes. Um, part of this is, is being done. Um, is there's been a, a lot of citizens' inquiry about serving on this committee, and I know the mayor is appointing uh, those people to do that. Um, and I'm. I've already, I believe you have two names already, and um, I have several more to submit to you to um, who, uh, people who have expressed interest in this. Uh, and then with that, if we do three, we should really have more alder persons on it. And um, I would recommend that um, Alderman Kittleson be the, the alderman uh, put on that because she has been attending all the meetings as well as she has been very um, looking for as much information as she can on the police station, even traveling to various places, looking at the various police stations, and I think she'd make a great addition to the committee. So when you make your appointments, I would suggest her. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alderman. Uh, President Graf. Excuse me, can I ask Alderman Graf? Alderman Graf, can you just clarify the amendment? It is to change the composition of the Building Use Committee to four older persons and three citizens at large. Is that correct? Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> and that amendment is, I think, a wise amendment. And, uh, broadens the, the, the scope and participation of the committee, and it does increase it by one alderman additionally, So it's a, and it gets the uh, community uh, input in it. So I think it's a, a, a good amendment. Any more? There being none, please call the roll. This will be the, on the amendment, and the amendment would, an I vote would be to change the composition of the Building Use Committee to four alder persons and three citizens at large. An I vote would do that. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. Bauman, Deberg, Eberg, Serta, Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. 
Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. And Stefan? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion passes, amendment passes. Now I need a motion to pass, put the resolution upon its passage as amended. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage as amended. A motion to second. Under discussion, <clears throat> the resolution is amended. There being none, please call the roll, Madam Clerk. Vanderweel? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Sagali? Aye. Stefan? Aye. And Susha? 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2178, General Ordinance Number 870506 by Alderman Susha, Vanderweel, Ratke, Meyer, and Montemayor relating to parking regulations to add a stop sign on Lincoln Avenue at North 6th Street on the northeast corner. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I'd also like to take 2179 and with it. They're relating to signage. Please do. Uh, changing some school zone signage. I make a motion that all these ordinances be put upon their passage. Motion a second to put all these ordinances upon their passage. And just as a notation, all these ordinances uh, pertain to parking regulations. Motion second. Any discussion? There being none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Eberg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Radke, Aye. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, Aye. Susha, Aye. and Vanderweel. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law 2271 will be referred to law and licensing and public works. 2272, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Genevieve Beenan questioning why it is inappropriate for all the persons Susha to raise fair and important questions that point to the continued need for monitoring how things are done in government. Alderman Graf. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, that RO, along with RO uh, 2273, and um, I would move that both ROs be accepted and, um, and placed on file. Uh, the second one is uh, a communication from Beth Breher, thanking all the persons who for keeping abreast of what is going on in the city. There's a motion to accept and file 2272 and 73. Is there a second to that? There's a second. Uh, I've got uh, Alderman Sigali going first. Vice President Berg, did you wish to speak no. to? No? Okay. Alderman Sigali, you're up. Thank you, Mr. May. I guess now I'm a little confused. Was 22-71, have we already done anything that's a... That was referred. That was referred. Oh, that was referred. Oh. We don't take Law and licensing and public okay. works. We don't vote on that. That's referred. Okay. Okay. We got 2272 and 2273 on the floor. Motion to accept and file. Any discussion on that further? There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2274, a resolution by Alderman Berg to include an advisory referendum question on the fire, de fire department based ambulance service on the April 4, 2006 election, a spring election ballot. Vice President Berg. Yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to ask for suspension of the rules. There's a motion to suspend the rules in a second. Any discussion on that? I object. Pardon me? I object. I object. And when there's an objection, we have to take a vote. Anything else? We'll take a roll call on the uh, suspension. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Let's see what the suspension does. Okay. <clears throat> this is to suspend. D Berg. Eberg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, no. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, no. Sagali, Aye. Stefan, no. Susha, no. Vanderweel, no. and Bauman. Eight eyes, seven noes. Motion fails. Resolution uh, 
by Oldman Berg 2274 will lie all over automatically unless somebody wants to file it? Okay. Eight eyes, you said. Eight eyes, seven no's. Requires a three-quarter three vote to suspend the rules. Three quarter vote. Yeah. Alderman, Vice President Burke. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my reason for suspension was that this was the last opportunity we had to get this on the April ballot. And I would uh, ask that of our clerk if that's still the case, that really if this lies over for two weeks, there is no ability to consider this for referenda. That's correct, Alderman Berg. Um, I need a six-week window in order to get it on the April ballot. Statutorily, I've got to publish the referendum question four weeks prior to the April election, and I have to get this question to the county clerk at the end of this month, by the end of February. And uh, the next upcoming elections will be in September and November, with November being the gubernatorial election? Yes. Okay. In that case, I would move to file, and I'll bring it back in November. Okay. There's a motion and a second to file 2274 under discussion. Under discussion, that's what I had asked to, is there a motion to file because there's no room anymore, so, okay. There being none. We can do it all eyes on the file, okay. sure. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2275, a resolution by Alderman Van Akron, Bauman, Berg, Serta, Davis, Groff, Kittleson, Manny, Meyer, Sigali, Stefan, and Vendor Wheel authorizing the establishment of the City of Sheboygan Ambulance Committee to investigate the possibility of placing the ambulance service in the Sheboygan Fire Department. Alderman Bauman. Oh, Stephan. Alderman Stephan. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the uh, resolution be uh, referred to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Commission. Okay. There's a motion and a second to refer 2275 to Fiscal Planning Committee under discussion. Uh, just as a FYI, I don't know if the committee will change the resolution, but obviously setting up this committee would be, you know, not make a whole lot of sense to do it a month before the election. So, you know, I talked to most of the people who co-signed and they all were under the understanding that if this passed, came back from the committee, the mayor wouldn't make the actual appointments until after the election, the April elections, because that, you know, makes more sense. Thank you, Alderman right. Stephan. Alderman. Alderman Stefan, can I ask you that you want this referred to strategic fiscal of the new Common Council, is that correct or not? I guess of this council, all the person Bird said, or all the person Graf said they were going to meet them, they would deal with me, so we can move it on to the next. You will move it on then, thank you. Alderman Montemayo. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. So we're simply referring it tonight. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 2276, an oral by the city clerk submitting a communication from Carter Paulus requ requesting that the Common Council direct the Ethics Board to investigate potential wrongdoing or improper behavior in the office of Alder Persons, Sigali, Berg, Serta, and Van Akron to determine whether censure or removal from office is warranted or other options to be considered and suggestions for the resolution to, to draft to drafted address the same. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion to file this document. Second. There's a motion a second to file under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would like to state that I think that it's time that these childish antics come to an end. Um, I know that, I think everybody here knows that there's nothing in this document that rises to the level of being in violation of an ethics complaint. In fact, I'll even ask City Attorney McLean if there's anything in here that is unethical. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, whether it's unethical, I guess, is a, a determination for the Ethics Board, but uh, I don't think it would be appropriate to send this communication to the Ethics Board. I think filing it would probably make more sense. Thank you. I just would like to go on to say that before everybody leaves this room tonight, I would ask that they look at the table of organization that is hanging on the wall over there. What you'll see at the top is that the alderman and the mayor oversee all of the departments. And that means that we have to work together, but ultimately we make the decisions and they have to do basically what we say. If we don't make the right decisions, what's not on that table of organizations is that the citizens are above us. And if we make bad decisions, then they can choose to remove us from office. So I would ask that we try to stop going ahead with these childish antics 
and that we move ahead collectively as a group and we do our job and move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Susha. There's a motion on the floor to file 2276. All those in favor, state aye. aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Motion carried. One opposition? One abstain. A. Abstention. One abstain. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2277 is an RO by the city attorney submitting a communication being an opinion from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities regarding the library director's employment contract as requested by the Common Council. And that will be referred as to the uh, special meeting that we will hold on Wednesday at 6.30. Can yes. I just say something about that? Yes. Excuse me. Um, Alderman, if you would, on 2277, that document, if you look at your agenda for the special meeting on Wednesday, Save this document because that is your document for Wednesday. So don't get rid of this one, okay? Just as a word. Thank bring you. It, bring it with you, right? Yep, that's what Very I need. Good. Please continue, Attorney McLean. 2278 is a communication from Gerald Lutzke, 1533 Kentucky Avenue, regarding his opinions on bringing the USS Edson to Sheboygan. And that will be referred to Marina and Harbor Committee and the Tourism Advisory Committee. 2279 is a claim from David Gallianetti for alleged damages to his vehicle when a city snowplow struck the vehicle. And that will be referred to Special Committee on Risk Management. 2280 is a communication from Scott Owart regarding his dissatisfaction with the treatment of a parking ticket while visiting the city. And that will be referred to Public Protection and Safety. Uh, 2281 says the same thing on the cover sheet, but I believe the attachment is a letter from Deborah Miller. There you go. Thank you. Communication from Deborah Miller regarding parking problems her and her family are having in the area of Memorial Hospital. And we'll go to public oh, protection. Oh, I see. 2281. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 2282 is a communication from Fire Chief Jay Lestusky stating that he feels it's premature to solicit public input and or a referendum based on the fact that the council does not have concrete information to provide the citizens at this time regarding the ambulance service. And that will be referred to Strategic Fiscal Committee. Right. There's a look. Uh, President Groff, before we adjourn. Yeah, the communication from the Fire Chief, I would move to file that um, because we aren't having a referendum anymore. Well, that's, that's true. Second. There's a motion and a second to file under discussion. Did, did everybody get what, Alder, what President Groff said? Okay. All those in favor state Alderman Susha? Um, thank you, Your Honor, but I think he's also, it's premature to solicit public input, and strategic fiscal planning right now has four public input sessions on the book. So I don't know if you want to still move ahead and file it or... Send it on to the committee. Right. For that point, we can go there. I'll withdraw my motion. Motion is withdrawn. Is there a second withdrawn? Sure. Okay. That'll be referred to Strategic Fiscal Committee. Motion to? Motion to adjourn. All those in favor, state aye. Okay. Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>